He's good. got my day. That look like it's all good, right? <laughs> what time is it? Seven o'clock. Okay. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Would you please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, if you can follow along on our agenda, we will move along to the report by the superintendent, Dr. Hinson. Thank you. Just a couple of items for you this evening. I think it probably goes without saying, but it's certainly great for us to have uh, East High School football team playing in the state championship game on Saturday. And so second year in a row, we've had a high school team playing in the state championship game. And so congratulations to um, certainly all of our students, employees, um, and their, their families there at East. If you were at the game Friday night, it was a little chilly. Um, <laughs> it seems to be the, the scenario for the weekend. But really, what a great turnout of our community on a bitterly cold Friday night and great performance by our, by our kids as well. And so as you know, it's always exciting to see uh, those type things happen for our kids, so congratulations to them. Also, a uh, note to you, uh, School Messenger, as you know, we're rolling that out. Some of you have had multiple forms of communication already this week, and so we're finalizing all those things. Really, one of the, uh, the key goals is to improve communication, and hear that vibration? That's a great part of the communication. So uh, <laughs> anyway, trying to figure out what's landing on our roof tonight. <laughs> it's... Uh, Anyway, I won't go down that road. But school messenger and communication, you know, there are a lot of times that there's information that we want to get out in a very timely fashion through multiple methods to get that communication out. And sometimes when you can get that, method, that message out in a proactive stance, it really helps combat for a void of communication. Sometimes people create things. I've heard all kinds of things even today. And I thought, gosh, how can we communicate? So I've heard today, well, the board's going to vote tonight to eliminate the collective bargaining agreement with the teachers. It's like, seriously? I didn't know that. <laughs> News to me. News and to so me. through School Messenger, um, really it helps us communicate in a proactive fashion, in a timely fashion, and through a number of means that people really want. So whether it's their texting or voicemail or, or email, whatever it is. And so we're finalizing the implementation of School Messenger. And, and thus far, knock on some wood, uh, that's going well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We will move on to open forum. We have one speaker tonight, and that's Nancy Fritz. Board members, Dr. Henson, and administrators. I'm addressing you tonight to adamantly share my concerns about item four under section P of the agenda, the Innovative District Grant. After speaking with Dr. Henson, Last week, it was my understanding that he was going to recommend to the board that the district not apply for this grant. I assume that is his, still his intention. However, I think you also need to hear from NEA Shawnee Mission. House Bill 2, 2319, Coalition of Innovative Districts, was originally drafted by ALEC, the American Legislative Exchange Council, and can be found on its webpage. This particular organization has not shown to be favorable to public education. Coalition of Innovative Districts has not only been opposed by KNEA, but by the Kansas State Department of Education, PTA organizations, as well as many of your community groups. As stated on the last page of the PowerPoint link found on the KSDE webpage, quote, a public innovative district shall be exempt from all laws and rules and regulations that are applicable to school districts, end of quote. These exemptions would include due process and the items found in the Professional Negotiation, Negotiations Act, our rights to bargain, and have fair dismissal hearings. The innovations offered in this bill are simply exemptions from established laws. NEA Shawnee Mission is certainly not opposed to truly innovative educational practices. However, there are significant questions regarding this coalition of innovative districts and its potential impact on employee rights, the authority of the Shawnee Mission Board of Education, and loss of local control of our district. NEA Shawnee Mission believes after a thorough review of the grant and thoughtful consideration of the impact that joining the coalition will have on our school district and students, you will choose not to apply for this grant. We believe, as we assume the board and administration also believe, that decisions that impact our students are best made in Shawnee Mission. 
by Shawnee Mission board members, Shawnee Mission administration, and Shawnee Mission teachers and patrons, not by state level administrators from other school districts. NEA Shawnee Mission believes we can be true, innovative, innovative district without the formal <coughs> label offered by this bill and all the ramifications that may come with it. In my opinion, applying for membership into this coalition could jeopardize the collaborative relationship that we have worked so hard to establish. It may not provide the appropriate platform for the continuation of this type of relationship. Trust will most certainly be challenged. That is too great a risk for all of us. I may have questions during the discussion of this item and do request permission to ask them if I do. <laughs> Do you have any questions right now that no, you would like I'd to No, I'd like to forth? listen to the discussion <laughs> first. <laughs> we shall see. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Fritz. Okay. We'll move on to uh, the approval of minutes for the regular meeting of November 11th. So moved. Second. Thank you, Mrs. Mack and Mrs. Neighbor. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries 7-0. Move on to the adoption of the agenda. Move adoption. Second. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Denny and Mrs. Goodburn. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries 7 0. Approval of routine business by consent. Is there any item that a board member would like to remove from the consent agenda? No. If not, then Mrs. Neighbor. I would move approval of routine business by consent. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Mrs. Bisfield. Any discussion on this? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries 7 0. Okay, that moves us forward to letter K and letter N. Um, <coughs> no? No, but what are we back yeah. to here? <laughs> And sense. You're right. N. N. Thank you. You're right. <laughs> Thank you. N1. Back. Okay. Uh, letter N, human resources. Appeal of liquidated damages. Dr. Henson. We have one uh, resignation tonight, and my uh, recommendation to you is that we do not impose the $1,000 resignation penalty. We've looked at it carefully, and it's a situation really um, that's beneficial to the employee. So I'm recommending uh, accepting the resignation without imposition of the resignation penalty. Very good. Move approval for N1 liquid appeal of liquidated damages. Thank Second. Thank you, Mrs. Bisfield and Mrs. Neighbor. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries 7 0. We'll move down to uh, letter P, Dr. Henson. We have first reading of three different policies tonight. The first one is board policy BB. Uh, Mr. DePiro, I'll ask you to comment <coughs> on this, please. Uh, policy BB is school district uh, board member boundaries. Uh, this is the annual event where we uh, review the precincts that uh, the Johnson County election offices have changed to uh, comport with the current uh, school uh, board boundaries that we have. Uh, we, we maintained the boundaries along the precinct lines that we drew before. There were four precincts that uh, were split into multiple precincts, but they were th within the same attendance areas, and so those were maintain maintained within that attendance area. Uh, the, uh, the population pro proportionality along the high school boundary lines has not changed since the last time we adopted this uh, 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 policy, and there's really no recommended changes at this time to what's currently uh, in the board policy, except for those precinct changes being renumbered and reinserted into the board member boundaries where they were in the first place. Okay. Are there any questions for Mr. DePiro? Okay, thank you. That was the first reading. We'll move on to P2. Back to you, uh, Mr. DePiro. Uh, this is the uh, uh, next two policies uh, have to do with our self-insured retention program for our workers' compensation. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Okay. Um, at the present time, the uh, school district is uh, self-insured as far as workers' compensation uh, uh, insurance is involved, and so we actually pay the claims to the individuals, to the carrier, uh, to the to the individuals, to the doctors, to the clinics. Uh, uh, the procedure that we're using 
uh, has not uh, fully adhered to the current board policy, and so we're changing it to make sure that we're in line with what our actual practice is. Uh, sometimes those payments are due prior to the board meetings, and so those check registers are released prior to the board actually receiving them. And so what this policy does do is provide the board members a copy of the check registers uh, during the board <coughs> meeting and authorize the reimbursement of the impress fund that our third party administrator retains. But those checks uh, obviously needed to be released in order to pay for the services that are rendered from the doctors and the clinics and the hospitals. Uh, and so this, this policy uh, goes more in line with what our current practice is. Uh, the, the board will still get uh, each, each board meeting a copy of the check register, which is uh, uh, under the, uh, that the board can see, and also the amount that needs to be reimbursed to that impress fund. And, and that's really the next two policies that are, that are involved in this. I can any answer questions? any questions. Any questions from Mr. Shapiro? Okay, and do you want to um, talk to the third item there, or is that just basically included it, with the basic, same rationale? It's the same rationale. It's just basically the changing of some of the uh, verbiage to, to comport with the first one, to, so that they both, they're both in tandem that need to be read together in order to uh, allow us to do what we're trying to do. Okay. Any other questions on either one of those two? Very good. Those are first readings, so we'll address those at the next meeting. Uh, the Innovative District Grant, Dr. Hinson. We've spent a lot of time um, as the administration looking at the Innovative Schools Grant and the concept of what, what is an innovative school district. Um, maybe we should start there. That's a great question. And so what are the items that can be changed, that we would like to be changed at the state level, that could be changed, if that makes any sense, to the Innovative Schools Grant. And so what we've tried to assimilate is what are we not able to do that we would like to do and something at the state level level is prohibiting that the Innovative Schools District, Innovative School District Grant would actually allow. And so that was a really interesting discussion to say is it something that we've put in place or is it something at the state level? Looking at the Innovative Schools Grant, certainly there's a, a lot of information out there around the state. Some of it's accurate information. Some of it is not accurate information. Uh, one of the issues for me and reason why I'm not bringing a recommendation to you tonight, the timing is not good for us. It's certainly not appropriate. Uh, we're in the midst of crafting our strategic plan. We're in the midst of putting these long-range goals in place and then to take an additional responsibility on that is uh, loosely crafted. I'll say loosely crafted uh, at the state level, that certainly presents challenges to us as well. So we're not opposed to saying what are the barriers keeping us from things that we might want to be doing. However, timing is not appropriate for us right now. Uh, there are some questions uh, that we're going to be have to be answered down the road at the state level, uh, maybe even by the courts. I'm not sure we want to be involved in that. Um, as we look at this issue, it was not a consideration to uh, go after the, the Professional Negotiations Act or our collective bargaining agreement, uh, what are things, transfer rules or other things that we really might take interest of. But um, I don't have a um, grant proposal for you to review tonight, no recommendation to proceed other than we did spend a lot of time really looking at it. I believe some of our uh, districts in this county and neighboring counties are going to pursue um, an attractive component was, gosh, to be at the, the ground level, to really craft the parameters. Um, certainly that's attractive, um, but there are also detriments to that as well. And so looking at the whole process, um, I am uh, not bringing you a recommendation tonight that we should apply. Uh, we'll watch with interest and see what, it occur see what occurs, but at the same time, continue to look internally to see what things we might have self-imposed and if there are other remedies that really need to take place, I think the appropriate mechanism is to really look at legislative remedy. There's something keeping us from really doing what we want, we want to do. And so, um, again, we'll watch with what great interest what occurs, uh, what districts applies, and the process that happens. Um, but it is vague. Uh, the timing is not good for us at, at all. And so uh, we'll see what happens with this in the future. Happy to entertain any questions, any thoughts about this at all. Dr. Denny. I, I thought it interesting 
um, to consider some innovations. And without reading the law, the things that came to mind were, gee, if we don't have to abide by any of the state statutes, um, then sure, let's let's craft our own for funding formula and uh, <laughs> we'll just go down the road. I uh, Reality set in when I read the bill and uh, <laughs> that was one of those things I said you couldn't do. Uh, so it, it wasn't quite innovative enough for me, I guess, uh, to really uh, pursue. There, I do think there's a lot to think about uh, going <coughs> forward. And I, you know, I challenge those in the room and my colleagues on the board to, to sort of think about, you know, what is school in the future? Today, in my opinion, school is measured by um, how many seats are on the chairs in the classrooms for how many hours? Which is not necessarily a measure of how much you can learn. And so I, I just think there's lots of lots of things to think about. Mrs. Neighbor. I would also like to uh, thank you for taking a step back after having done a lot of preliminary work. The, the bill was written rather loosely. My concerns, part of my concerns were with uh, who was in charge. Um, and some of that leadership was placed in the hands of legislators or whoever would be sitting in a particular seat, whether it be the governor or the head of the education committees. And we certainly have no control as a a, a board sitting entity the voters have control but we do not and um, education can take many different definitions in the eyes of uh, individuals and that was one of my main concerns because we all have a different perception of what a suitable education is or our what our standards may be in conjunction with another district or another individual so um, I'm sure more of this will be coming forward at a later time, but uh, it's, it's like buying the first car. It's a bad thing to do <laughs> because all the bugs are in the first one and you have no idea down the road what's going to get improved or if it is going to get improved. So thank you for looking at it, but thank you for taking a deeper uh, look at the, the bill itself. Mrs. Mack? Um, we, do, we did receive information on this from you and, and from your cabinet as well, but I also wanted to say thank you to those who sent us thoughtful information. It is always good to hear um, from our patrons, especially when they do such a thorough job. And um, thank you for the information that you provided each and every one of us. We appreciate it. And I, I, obviously, I agree that this was a good non-recommendation. <laughs> Mrs. Bisfield. I, I would certainly <coughs> echo everyone, what everyone said, and I, I think that probably, and it's sort of a very short and sarcastic comment, but the only part of it to me that is interesting is the fact that we certainly all want to have innovative schools, and I think we can do that on our own. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other comments? Okay, I would just say we'll see what happens at December 1st. I believe that's the cutoff date for the application, and. We'll see where this pans out as the year progresses here. It will be interesting to watch. Um, I'm, I'm happy to watch it um, from a distance. Right. And so uh, I think that's uh, certainly beneficial for the school district at the present time. Absolutely. I think we have enough on our plate right now. We do. Mm -hmm. Okay. We will move on to P5 then, Dr. Henson. Uh, the recommendation tonight is in relation to our health insurance broker services. It's a change from our current service provider. Um, our current service provider, I don't have anything derogatory to say about them at all. I think they've really provided good service to us. And so the process uh, we went through, so we had an RFP in relation to uh, these broker services. We had a number of responses. Uh, we had a team that really looked at four uh, through an interview process, narrowed it to two uh, from there. And so from that point tonight, <coughs> my recommendation to you tonight is to recommend CBiz as our district health insurance broker. Um, based on a couple of different issues. One of those primary issues in relation to experience with health clinics, specifically with school districts um, here in the metro area, what that might um, provide for us. 
And so I am happy tonight to bring a recommendation to you that is not because of the level of dissatisfaction or problems. That, that's certainly good to note. Mm -hmm. um, but I think uh, this provider will give us uh, a benefit in the relationship with potential health clinics and in school districts in the metro area that really sets them apart. Very good. Okay. I would move approval of the health insurance broker being CBIS. Thank you, Mrs. Biscoe. Thank you, Dr. Tony. Is there any other discussion or questions? Costs, increased costs? No, no, no change in okay. cost to us. I think so. Very good. Mrs. Levins? There is no, um, we haven't reviewed a contract for this, which is generally. So we're approving the CBIS as our health insurance broker, and then you will approve a specific contract at a later time. Great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries 7 0. Move on to the reports to the board, the board financial report. Dr. Hansen. We have the board financial report as I chew a piece of ice, so you have to forgive me. <laughs> so we'll be happy to entertain any questions uh, that you might have in relation to this report. Are there any questions by the board members? So for those that are new to this, it's, it's the monthly report. The numbers change, obviously, on a monthly basis as they're updated, but it's the same uh, format and report that you receive uh, every single month. Right. Okay, very good, thank you. Then I guess we will finish up with comments from board members. Are there any comments this evening? Mrs. Neighbor. I heard a wonderful thing come over my, well, I got a wonderful email and it said congratulations to uh, our newest doctor on our cabinet, Dr. Leanne Neal. So congratulations on your great accomplishment. Mrs. Levins. Um, I would like to just um, point out that you've all been given a report for the KSB uh, con convention that's coming up, the legislative report, and that that's been given to you for your information. Mm -hmm. um, if you have any um, comments that you'd like to make, you should certainly feel free to do so at this time. The convention will be held December 8th, Sunday, December 8th, at the Delegate Assemblies at 8.30 in the morning, um, and the resolutions are are there before you. Okay, and you will and be I attending? I will be the delegate, yes. Very good, mm -hmm. very good. And Mrs. Neighbor, are you attending as well? I am going to check her credentials to make sure that she's official <laughs> I think you should. at the, the assembly to make sure it's really her. Very good. So Mrs. Back. I just wanted to remind everybody um, that a month ago, we changed um, the board meeting from December 9th to December 16th. So just wanted to. Very good. We only have one board meeting in December. And if you missed the last board meeting, we will be only having one board meeting per month now. It will be the fourth Monday of the month. Um, prior to the board meeting, starting in January, we'll have a 5.30 p.m. work session prior to the actual board meeting. And that's an open meeting. We'll be sitting here in this room and discussing uh, whatever's on the agenda or some other issues that come up with the district here. So be aware of that change. And you're, of course, welcome to come and sit in at 5.30 and then start in again with us at 7. It's pretty exciting here. So I know you'll all want to attend. Um, any other comments from board members? And Thanksgiving tomorrow. I was just going to say.